So if you watch this right to the end, you will no doubt be a little bit wiser because I am with somebody who's quite outstanding. I'll never get to meet Napoleon Hill, but I've got a real life version of Napoleon <laughs> Hill now. Do well, you want to introduce kind. yourself? Hi, my name's Damien Hughes. And Damien, you've done something really special looking at outstanding performance of coaches for the last three, four years? How oh, that was done? a research for a book. I've been doing it for about 20 years in terms of working with the elite sports coaches and business uh, leaders. Ferguson, you've dealt with some serious names. Yeah, I've been lucky enough. Uh, Sir Richard Branson, Sir Alex Ferguson, Sir Terry Lee here. Uh, just three names there. Just, uh, the top I of am hand. so lucky I'm interviewing and I really acknowledge you taking your time to, to Oh, no, it's me. a pleasure to chat, Gary. So, look, Napoleon Hill, he said that the one trait of a highly successful person, he had nine actually, but the top one was staying in a positive state or getting yourself back into that positive state. Have things moved on 50 years? No doubt. Have you have you fine-tuned that list? Um, I mean, I'd, I think that's a really powerful point, Napoleon Hill's idea of being positive. I think that's important, but I often think it, it's balanced positivity. I don't think being sort of uh, over-the-top positive mm. um, you know sometimes shit does happen we mm. need to face that I think it's proportionality is really useful I often talk about the five to one ratio from research from um, a head of psychology at Washington a guy called John Gottman he talks about the best relationships work on a five to one ratio and the essence of it is more detailed what the essence is five positive statements for every one criticism or observation you make because you make that and you go that sometimes you do need to correct people sometimes you do need to tell people that they have to wind the neck in or improve. But then as long as you acknowledge when they have made the effort to do mm -hmm. so five times more, mm -hmm. that criticism gets received and therefore more likely to be actioned. If I was having a dinner party, this guy would be like my number one right at the top. I could well, talk to you all day. I, I guess the best value we can give you is your reading list, your, your list of self-development. What are the books that you've read that really inspired you? What are the courses you've done? And then that way, whoever's watching this, if you want to be an award-winning author, if you want to travel the world, you uh, uh, create possibilities in your business and in your life, what are those books? What are those films? What, are the, what made the man? Um, I mean, th there's so many books that I'd recommend. I often think that uh, one that humbles anybody that ever reads it is Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning. So that's a great book uh, that is a basis of so much of uh, mm. what we know today as modern day psychology is the idea of the freedom to choose our responses lies at the very heart of all success. So often when you hear people in organisations that will say to you, they often talk, they're often limiting their own choices that they make. Mm -hmm. Cynicism is a choice that we make. Open yourself up to possibilities is a choice that we make, and mm -hmm. we can do that regardless of it. And Frankel's book is, is powerful and humbling because he lived his research in the most strict way possible. He, he was interned as a prisoner in, in uh, the Nazi concentration camp. Yeah, camps. it was just at Auschwitz actually, just a few weeks ago. Really powerful stuff. Yeah, so so Frankel's book is often a great starting point of any of the research. Um, other books that have influenced. There's a great coach I met many years ago called Wayne Bennett, he's an Australian coach uh, in rugby league. And he wrote a lovely book with the title, Don't Die With The Music Still In You. And it's just a whole series of just short anecdotes that says, we've all got a talent, but we need to identify what that talent is. And that's the music that he says, once we can discover that, we have the ability to go and play it. Your legacy of today for me was that my son, my middle son, he, he's dyslexic, he's undiagnosed dyslexic and we're in the car. He says, Dad, I'm not very clever. I said to him, look, son, you are so clever. They haven't defined that yet. And your phrase today was ask him. Yeah, so it's, it comes from Howard Gardner, who's an educational psychologist. It says, don't ask people how clever are you, but instead ask them, how are you clever? Because everyone's intelligent. We're just intelligent in different ways. Some are socially gifted, some are physically, some are verbally, musically gifted. We all have a, we all have an innate intelligence. Our challenge is to find the individual's so intelligence I, and play to that. Einstein said, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it yourself. Like the man was terrible at school. Most of the, the entrepreneurs you've mentioned rolled off, left school early, so we still can't define intelligence. Yeah, I don't think, I, 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 I would, I'm not necessarily an advocate of saying that the, I think education is powerful. Very. It's like the Mandela quote that it's the engine that drives all human improvement. So 
but it's about educating um, the heart as well as the mind. I've learned so much in the hour and a half and I really I am grateful to. If you're about to book a speaker and you want to really make a difference to, because you've got speakers and blah, 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 and they, they're just following a lot of content that they've read. And I think that you're quite exceptional that you, you back it with science, you deliver well, the content is great. How do we get in touch with you? If you're, what, if you're watching oh, this and you, you, you want kind. some... Um, um, the, my email address, my uh, website address is liquidthinker.com mm -hmm. and they're on Twitter under that same uh, handle. Um, the idea of Liquid Thinker is that we all get caught in sort of pretty solid views on what the world should be and Liquid Thinking is about opening ourselves up to maybe some fluid ways of seeing the world slightly differently. Left brain, right brain, are you a sign up to that? Uh, yeah, there's some, there's some scientific basis on that and it's a great way of understanding um, our psychology in some circumstances. So yeah, there's some great stuff on I could that. talk to you all day long. Hopefully I get to buy you a beer. We are not Bolton fans. Just one, in case you're wondering, we're at Bolton <laughs> on a Hakim Group uh, conference and um, I'm really enjoying it. You're my highlight. Oh, well, thank you, Guy. That's really kind. Thank you for anyone listening. Have a good day, everyone.